1914-0285 and 0939, all funded in 2019 out of their current cash on hand plus that seven and a half cent rate into that fund. Memorial Bridge and Drive, we split up the engineering $650,000 into both 19 and 20. However, they may need an appropriation equivalent to engage that entire contract for $1.3 million in 2019. Either one of those are going to work from a, a cash flow perspective if they happen in the last half of the year. The uh, scour project, as Jim said, you've got 315000 that needs to be done in 19, 315 in 2020, both of those coming from the Hume Bridge. And the bridge apron removal and replacement, we've got 84, 250, and 19. And bridge rehabilitation for the Hume Bridge Fund, those got pushed back into 2021 and 2022. And the Memorial Drive right away is $220,000 in 2022. And then you'll see the, the overflow from these buckets. When we get out, like for the Memorial Bridge and Drive project, there's $12.6 million of construction that would need to take place, could take place as early as 23, 24, that you do not have a source of funding at this point in time. You do have the ability in bridge projects to issue bonds. And you know, that's always the project that you want to consider the impact on taxpayers versus the benefit to the, um, the county and the taxpayers and what those projects might yield for them. Um, back up to the green lines for the boom mowers and the dump trucks. Because the revenue stream in 2019 has lessened compared to what it was in 18, you've still got more money coming in than you had historically in 17 when they changed the legislation, but now they've pulled back some of that. So my advice is until we more concretely nail down what these projects are, what our revenue streams are, rather than paying cash for those pieces of equipment, I recommend that they do a 59-month operating lease they can operate, do an operating lease for less than five years out of their ongoing funds. Money's still fairly cheap at this point in time. So rather than pay that cash out all at once, I recommend that they <coughs> lease fund those for uh, the years 19 through 23. Chip seal fog contracted 50 miles a year. Looking at uh, in 2020 and 2021, I believe there are sufficient funds in the Motor Vehicle Highway Fund that you should be able to pay those $480,000 out on each. In the years 2022 and 2023, I think the Local Road and Street Fund will probably have sufficient money to make those expenditures. After 2023, in the red there, we haven't identified how those are to be paid. Blue line item is wheel tax. Again, as uh, Jim talked about, these berm cutters, ditcher, and tractor, rather than pay out what would be about $610,000 in cash, again, we advise that you go ahead and lease fund that across a 59 month lease so that you spread that expense out and retain some of your cash for other variances in here that may arise. The local road and street fund in orange, community crossings grant match. As Jim said, you know, you may have to pay out more than what's anticipated here, but you know, whenever we can leverage one of our dollars for three of the state's dollars, we want to put that forward as much as we can because you get so much more project by the amount of your local contribution. So we've put in that 312500 out of the local road and street fund for all the years. There is some additional cash in the local road and street fund. I think um, part of the capital road improvement widening can be paid out of there in 19 and 20. 
And again, like I said, in 2022 and 2023, I think it can help to pay some of the trip seal and fog expenses. And then, of course, in red are all your unfunded projects that you would like to do that you can't afford to do at this point or haven't identified how you're going to pay for it. Again, you know, you do have options. There are bonding options for bridges, not for roads. There are always income tax options. There may be grant opportunities that come along in the future. But we thought this would be a good reflective exercise to sit down and identify all those projects. What, should, what is it that we should be accomplishing? What is the order of those? How are we going to fund them? And then to show, as every community has, we have a list of projects that exceed your funding ability. And on this sheet, there's about $20 million of unfunded projects. You know, that's not uncommon to any other unit of government if they would lay out their uh, project needs versus the funding that they have available. And I'm sure it's no surprise to all of you. But we thought this was a good way to lay it down start to have that conversation of how are we going to pay for these things and get from A to B to C. The four pages behind this are the fund pages that you've seen from your fiscal plan for Cumbridge, Highway, Wheel Tax, and Local Road and Street. And it just shows you how we feathered those in across the years. And these are my test pages so that I assign these expenditures. I make sure that we still have cash at the end of the year and I haven't overdrawn it. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have on that. One point we had talked about too, Jeff, was the, the fact that the jail was going to be coming off bond. In, what, I think it's 24 25. 24 25. And that is a pretty significant levy of property tax. I think it's close to $700,000 a year. So with fit excise and see that, um, you know, you might have another three quarters of a million dollars a year that you know you could bond for. You could do short-term projects, pay all your bonds back in a couple of years, or you can accumulate them all together and do a bigger bond issue, keep that same tax rate. Um, while we're on the subject of the jail bond, and this is something that I brought up before, I believe, your jail bonds are old jail bonds. Any debt that was issued prior to June 30, 2005, the levy used to repay that debt draws income tax. When that debt expires, and any debt that you've issued after June 30, 2005 does not draw income tax. So you're going to have a drop in your income tax distribution in relation to all the other units in the county when that debt falls off in 2024-25. The library, Crawfordsville Library, has the same situation, but their debt levy is almost the same size as their operating levy. So they're going to see a huge dip in their income tax revenue when that falls off. Um, it's not built into your fiscal plan yet because it occurs the year after the debt drops off. So if we continue to go through these exercises, if I'm around at that point, we'll work that in to show you what that dip is so that you can plan accordingly and um, absorb that loss. Well, I guess the same, you know, after Jeff went through that, the, uh, you know, Cube Bridge was added at 1.6 and left it at the, the uh, 0.7 whatever. Um, we're going to assume that's okay with you guys. We showed you how we're spending it. And how, no, it's not enough, but that's we're at so I guess that's that's an assumption there that, uh, that you need to tell us what you're thinking so that Cambridge rate is up to 0 0.075 yes those things you have yeah, before all this only for 2019 just for 2019 just for 2019 and then it drops back to its historical 2.85 cents. Yeah, we do. Do we have to act on that every year or is that a year or six even eventually forward if we don't make it? I'll 
leave it at the legal capital, but typically you can go down, you can't go up without notifying taxpayers and reestablishing the fund. So going from seven and a half to two point eight five, you should be able to do we just do the point is we're gonna have to make the effort to do that this far In the budget process, I think that can be done fairly simply. Yeah. It's not the short timeline of establishing the bringing back up. You have to notify taxpayers and do all that prior to day one. Leases when you were talking about, are they going to be municipal leases? Is that what you kind of figured? Yeah, just a regular municipal operating lease. Where you're paying interest. You are going to pay interest, but it should be tax exempt. You can normally get that financing through your local bank, so you can go to the Indiana Bond Bank through their equipment lease program. But the other benefit to this is you don't have to continue. It's for some reason, because I've done this. For some reason, the budget changes, and there's no funds to pay that lease. The municipal lease can go back to the, the leaseholder and pay. That's one of the yeah. I mean, you know, it, it is a possibility. But I mean, it's, it, you could you could do that on a piece of equipment today. Let's say that boom board you got. For some reason, the funding for it went away and leased it for six months or a year. And next year, you have no funding for it. You can tell the lease company, I've got no funding for this. It goes back to the lease company, no penalty. Tomorrow, you can lease another piece because I've got dips for lease money I can use. And you haven't changed in the fence, so it's great. That's the key. In this case. But you are paying interest. You are paying interest. Generally, the lease amortizes over the period. Yeah, it would be at least purchase at the end. is But again, my recommendation is hold your cash for now until you guys, because the exercise that you've all undertaken, you know, it takes a couple of years to get it all sorted out. And in the mix, you guys have to write the ship and impose that income tax. So it's going to take a couple of years before you get everything squared away that you're comfortable with. Here's normal operations and how we're going to fund everything. In that transition period, I would recommend you pull the cash and stretch your payments just so that you have flexibility to adjust that things change. This Memorial Bridge troubles me. We were spending how much we spent today. Yeah, I did. But I don't see the wisdom in the bridge in the twelve million dollar project and what it means to tax it. Has there been any other plan looked at? Why is this the greatest thing for the tax I'm just trying to understand. I, I guess I'll go through that as we as I get through my presentation of what we're doing and that's all it is part of what's identified through the strategic plan we're doing on the north and the south side of town and, and the conversation we're having with NDOT their long term plans and what's come out of the comprehensive plan as well.
And uh, we have a few miles of roads that you can drive on and not shake dry. Uh, uh, and water is a road's biggest enemy, I think. Uh, I like the idea of cutting the berms, cutting the ditches. Uh, I know we've tried that in the past several years ago, throwing the dirt over the farmer's fields and they, a lot of them didn't like it because it wasn't just dirt that was going in there, it was every piece of trash that was thrown out over the years. Whether it's bottles, steel, paper, whatever. And I didn't know how we could mitigate that problem. I mean, in, in my opinion, side ditches are are very essential along with the burden to get the water off the road, get it away from the road, and save the roads. And then, after that's done, I'd like to see us pave the roads and get these roads for the people that drive them every day are happy with them. I hear that a lot. Uh, and nothing is the highway anymore. I know you're doing the best you can with what you got. Mm -hmm. I think we do what we do. I do. I think we have. Okay. Didn't know if you have any ideas on that, John, or not. All right. Let, let me just go through this then. We can come back to all the budgets individual budgets. So, you know, we, we've got a lot going on. Uh, you know, it, it is exciting times here. There's so much potential in this community. You know, mainly what I hope to accomplish is a clearer understanding by the council that you know we have a vision, a plan of action, and that what we see our financial needs are to accomplish those goals. You know, I've been at this a year and a half now. You know, and I've learned a lot. You know, mainly uh, we don't have to recreate the wheel. You know, you don't have to go very far for just to, to see prosperity. You know, this is a this is a population. Um, future today and future population of, of the state of Indiana. Uh, the counties in, in the dark blue are the ones growing by more than 40%, 10% down. If you look at Montgomery County, we're declining by 10% in the next, by 2050. Uh, you know, prosperity is at our doorstep. It is not a stretch for us to think that we can't be part of that opportunity. Uh, my strategy was to see what these guys were doing to be successful and, and, uh, uh, and, and what, you know, there are some unique circumstances that that we can't, you know, that, that certain can have that we don't have that, that we can't do here. But there are a lot of things that they're doing that we can implement here. Uh, you know, you've heard me say a lot about planning. You've heard me say that a few times. Uh, you know, the whole purpose of planning is so you're effective when you take action. You know, a clear vision, clear goals, a clear path to implementation. Uh, you know, we started looking for some, some help, professional help. You know, our engineer, you know, better manage our resources to try and develop a long-term plan to address our county's road and bridges like you talked about, to prioritize, to be efficient with the money. You know, I think we all agree you know, we've taken a heck of a first step there with Jim and, and, uh, and, and what we're doing. Uh, you know, we hired a planner. You know, there's been a stigma with planning in this community forever. You know, the first thing we did was, uh, uh, was did an economic development plan. We identified areas of opportunity in this community where where we where our potential to grow our population, our our jobs, our business and industry. Uh, and they look somewhat logical, I would assume, you would all think. But you know, with that, uh, we, we started a strategic plan. We went out in the new core 3274 new core corridor and, and did our first thing, and that was probably the closest, if you look at that map, closest to prosperity. Our first, you know, opportunity probably coming from the east, uh, and did a strategic plan. It bores down into those areas and and, pretty, and uh, identifies what type of infrastructure, what type of opportunity 
to, uh, you asked about the Memorial Bridge and why that would be a, a good thing. Uh, when you do a strategic plan in an area, it identifies those opportunities. The reason. This is my plan. This, this, is, this, is, this is the fact, the, the process that you go through to, to identify why you would spend money anywhere. You know, and then through this process, uh, what type of infrastructure would incent that growth if that's the opportunity? And so, you know, but when, when that go ahead. Second, John, you still, you're showing me 32 and 74 talking about the Memorial Bridge. Okay. Right. Yep. No, no. I'm, that's just part of the whole okay, process just, here of planning. I just want to keep track yep. of it. You know, and this is sideways here, but this is the this is the build out on the sewer project out there now. You know, and what the opportunities for uh, you know the infrastructure that's going to in, you know in, in set that growth that that's identified, the opportunities identified. Um, you know, from from this, we're out there out there on the, the north side. We're doing a strategic plan on the north and south side now. You know, you. You look at the north side, and we've all seen the map of 231, and and uh, you know, in the past from Indot, where they they made the four lane over here a mile, or they made the four lane over here a mile. Have you even seen routes that come through over to you know 74 and 32, the by you know bypassing? And so, as we were looking at our opportunities there, we needed to have a discussion with the state, and you know, where are you with this road? What are you? Where are you today and what you're doing, your decision is, we showed them the planning we're doing today. They jumped right on and said, well, I'll tell you what, for sure, we're going from 74 to that bridge up there, flipped in quick, fertilizer, four lane, right where it's existed. I said, okay, that's huge, that's enough for me today because, you know, if we're looking in this area and our main thoroughfare is right there and not moving, then we can start looking at, at that area and how to grow out that area. Uh, 650 on Jim's map here, uh, and the opportunity to attracts. That's another example of long-term planning and how it's so important. That, that was 30 years down the road, but because we planned for it and we identified it long-term, as we got a grant like Jeff talked about, there's opportunities all the time. You know that can come up on the priority. You know they, what the end of really liked as we showed them our plan too was was the connectivity from the north side. They call it a bypass, you know, to, to get traffic. And there's industrial on the east side here to get uh, traffic across the, the north side of town to, to 47. And then when you start looking at that and how you are have the potential to develop hundreds of acres here on the east side of 231, how uh, that new, uh, uh, Concord Road uh, expanded out to 400. As NDOT brings in their four lane up here, that's going to be a major intersection at 400 and 231. So, you know, the whole concept of, of looking to the future and planning ahead, and, and yeah, it is, but, you know, we just heard from Jim, it's going to take five years to build a bridge. You know, that's five years at, at, the, at the earliest, you know. So, if you don't have this kind of view of what you're doing, you're, ne you're never going to get there, you know. You could have a, you know, a, a federal funding opportunity coming. If you don't have stuff shovel ready or, or designed or you couldn't even apply for it. So anyway, that's that's the, you know, we're in the process of, of doing that strategic plan on the north side that, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not saying the mayor's fired up about this either, you know. I, but I told him the same thing. I said, let's, let, let's use our strategic plan and, and, and let it show us the opportunities. And then when we, then we can discuss, you know, how to take advantage of those opportunities, what kind of infrastructure was, and then how to pay for it. You know, so it's not me selling this. It's, it's, it's a vision and it's a strategy uh, that will all work out better. Same thing with the south side of the road or south side of Crawfordsville. Um, we also wanted to talk to NDOT about 32. If we're developing out here 74 and 32. 32 is a connector to 65, and I mean, we farm out that way, and my gosh, it's just bumper to bumper. It's dangerous, crooked. You know, they needed to know 
that we're thinking about the development that's coming out there and how that's going to increase traffic. That relationship we started building with, with NDOT was tremendous. It's going to be tremendous down the road. They were so excited uh, when we sat down and showed them this. They first showed them the, the Memorial Drive stuff here, and, and uh, they were long range guys. One of them was a signal guy, I think. I don't know what he was. They went over to their cells and had their little calculator out there, you know, calculating when they came back and said, We love that idea of that coming out at 100. We would love to put a light right there. It's, a, it's awful hard for them to, to justify a light at Concord Road, but that concept is completely in line with what they're thinking. Because we sat down and shared our plans with them, you know. So those guys are on board with us. Um, again, the tracks thing came up. That's that's just why you plan. Opportunities every day, priorities can change. Um, the comp plan. That's the biggest thing this community's ever done to move our county forward. Biggest thing. It's the voice of the people. The will of the people. It's you know, it's the it's the mandate for every elected official. No more single issue candidates who only run to stop something. An elected official that doesn't follow the voice of the citizens should be ushered out in the next election. Side note, I guess. You know, I'll hand it to the no growth people, you know, the crowd for you know the fear tactics have been used to scare citizens into in, in the inaction was a brilliant strategy. You know, because of this comprehensive plan, the people have spoken, there's no more fear mongering we're going forward here. You know, we've heard overwhelming, or, you know, we actually went through this process. And uh, we heard our citizens state overwhelmingly that they want to grow our community in population, in job creation, in quality of place. They want to create a safe place that their kids want to stay and raise a family. This process has opened the door for our future. No more guessing what direction to take as a community leader. You know, there are also identified a handful of things that, that you know, the citizens don't want in this community, which is exactly part of the process. You know, how, how important was it, talking about hiring help, how important it was to, uh, you know, to get HWC and Chris Hamm involved in, in this? And, uh, you know, an example of how that's even saved money, if you're all about saving money. You know, the sewer board's about to uh, spend a bunch of money on a new, on a new sewer, sewer pipe in the, uh, uh, that in the end would not have been sized appropriately for the future opportunity coming to the I-7432 corridor. But because the strategic plan was opportunities were identified and it was early enough in the process that the design work could be updated and now we have a system going in that will match the growth potential for years to come. Financial help. Jeff Peters right here. Perfect example. We knew we needed to fill in the gaps we had in understanding our finances. Exactly what we had for revenue and expenses learning how our decisions about investing in future infrastructure projects could possibly impact our revenues, all the while staying within our conservative parameters. Marketing. You know, our economic development director. You know, not only answer the calls when business and industry knock, but work with our exist, you know, work with our existing business and um, workforce development, helping develop strategies to train current employees as well as new recruits. Anyone of you who met Cheryl Moore for you would quickly understand how fortunate we are to have her hired as part of our team. Legal help. Not only are we blessed by Taylor Law Firm being part of our value, part member of our community, but to have their experience in municipal law, representing us in matters where inexperienced attorneys would likely put our community at risk in very expensive litigation. You know, uh, the landfill, we can talk about that here. You know, that we, we're using you know, local health there, Decker uh, Engineering. Landfill's been treated like a monster. We just left it alone, no one, no one would notice. But in the end, we found not only uh, that we got back on track with groundwater testing, but actually identified opportunities. You know, potentially turning brown space into green space. Wrap up here, I, you know, I started out uh, saying, uh, 
you know, we have a lot going on. Uh, these are exciting times. You can see we're well on our way to capitalizing on our opportunities. The budget we have presented to you accomplishes our objective today as well as allows us resources to invest in what it will take to obtain the things our citizens voiced that they wanted in the comprehensive plan. We all agree that other departments have priorities as well. Getting our wages up for our employees, not just to keep them, but hopefully draw new prospects uh, in the future. You know, our jailers, you know, and that's, I would do that for any amount of money, you know. So I understand what your tasks are. I'm not saying that, but uh, we also know we hadn't taken the time to share with you everything we're wanting, uh, we're working on, and hopefully you can see the value in our request. So you guys want to add anything, Bill and Jim? And then I guess we can take questions too. Just one correction, and I think we were talking about that jail bond is actually what 1.3 million. It's on our budget for the year, yep. so it's like 632,000 for payment twice a year. Yeah. Do that. It won't. Um, it won't do 